Just a follow up video to the first part of that Farnell power supply video I did a month ago. Um, it's been a long while coming because it's been very very hot in my little workshop um, and I have to have the fan going otherwise it gets too hot and the fan doesn't um, uh, allow for very good audio. So anyway, this is sort of where I got to last time, was on the verge of just putting these new um, electrolytics in. I've put the new clips in and then put the capacitors in obviously and uh, re uh, replaced all the wiring. I then went through and calibrated it which I'll show you in a few seconds but uh, the meters, uh, sorry the power supply is working really really well now. Um, I'll just pause here and we'll have a look at the calibration. So here's a view of the PCB and there's one exactly the same the other side because this is a dual power supply. Now to calibrate this thing you connect an accurate voltmeter, I use my Fluke 25 here, uh, connect it to the output terminals on the front here and then turn the volts knob fully to the right and obviously this being a 30 volt um, uh, output um, you want to read 30 volts on the meter here so you adjust T1 which is this one here until you read 30 volts on your meter and then you adjust T3 here which is this one here you adjust it so the meter reads 30 volts and it all worked very well actually it was really quick and usually you have to go back and forth on these but uh, it, you know it seemed to work first time so all we've got left to do now is um, have a look at how uh, accurate the meter needles are and they're pretty accurate Right here we go, I'm just about to test this thing and um, show you it on the fluke but before we do I'll just drop in a little bit of video just to show you how the uh, new electrolytics uh, fitted inside the unit. I just want to give you a close up of these disgusting capacitors here, now they've all leaked, look at the state of this one and this one and this one and the electrolyte has actually, you can see it all coming off there. The electrolyte, I don't know if you can see, it's actually jumped across about an inch and it's spurted down the side. Can you see these two, two tracks? They line up exactly with the holes here and it's left some sort of corrosion down the back where it joins as well. You can see that very well. And there. can see this so that's the electrolyte has spurted about an inch but uh, yeah yummy look at those so I've got um, capacitors I've got some new 25 millimeter clips um, they should be fitting in there very nicely like that so I'm just going to take some photographs of how these are wired up and I'll get the new capacitors. I might have to take the um, the front panel off as well actually to put these in or at least this, these tops here, these uh, shield things but that's going to be a work so, oh, sorry that's going to be a bit of work so I won't actually film that because I'll be struggling and swearing. Right, well, I actually am going to film a bit of this just in case it's useful for anyone else in the future as well as for my own information. Right, these capacitor clips are actually riveted on um, which is slightly annoying which means I've got to get um, uh, agricultural with it. Right, so these are screwed on with sheet metal screws four of them and then this cover which also mounts the PCB um, just lifts back so I have got enough room to work but uh, it's a bit of a bit of a nightmare I'll have to grind those off and try and protect all this area as well um, I don't really want to unwire all this and just so you can see there's one of the electrolytics 
nice but that's what I want to do I want to remove these and put some new clamps and luckily the uh, centers of the 25mm clamps um, seem to be exactly the same as these well these 80mm or, or whatever they are 50mm 50mm clamps um, yeah the centers are uh, exactly the same so that's good news so that was a quick look at how the new uh, electrolytic cans and clamps fitted on top of the um, transformers hope that might be of use to someone else now we're going to have a look properly at um, how accurate these uh, needle readings are or, um, against um, the fluke here and um, one of the problems I had was with my old mini reg power supply my weir mini reg um, you couldn't tell on the meter what volts were actually being output so this is one reason why I wanted this to be fairly accurate right so hopefully you can see the fluke there in the, on the right hand side right so connect up switch the output on I'll bring her up to 5 volts first on the dial I think you can see we've got 4995 on the fluke there bring her up to 10 volts we've got 9.995 there let's just adjust it up a little bit this is the fine adjustment so I've got pretty much bang on 10 volts there that needles bang on 15 volts and we're bang on 15.01 on the fluke I think you get the general idea Let's bang it straight onto 25 volts it's gone past it a little bit and we're on 25.09 there actually we're a little bit past it on here so very very accurate um, and it, it's the same with the other side as well so these are well worth picking up um, I'm going to start using this quite a lot now unfortunately it's too big to stay on the bench permanently but um, it'll sit down on the floor here um, you know one useful thing you know I can power up radios and everything and uh, it's going to be a useful bit of kit around the workshop well thanks for watching this um, hopefully more videos to come um, as I say it's been really hot this last month here hot and muggy um, not ideal for working um, and certainly not for filming so um, I've got a couple more radios to work on I've got a nice valve radio coming up um, an Invicta uh, an ACDC set, unfortunately it's missing its knobs um, and not a lot I can do about that but um, we'll try and bodge something up so we can at least get it working. Alright, thanks for watching.